Uh, good morning, and uh, well, thank you for asking me along to speak. Um, yes, 10 garden centres uh, started the business four and a half years ago and uh, bought the 10th a couple of weeks ago. When I agreed to come here, when I was pressed into this, I didn't realise I'd be buying a garden centre between agreeing and coming here. So um, I'm going to disappear again shortly because we've got quite a lot going on. But I've just got a few minutes and I just want to really just challenge, from my perspective, the way you present yourselves at Glee. Glee is such a critical show for us. And I'll just take you back to five years ago. I bought my first garden centre on the Friday before Glee. I went to Glee as me, having been 20 years previous, in a big garden centre. You, most of you probably supply it. A little place called Webbs at Witchbold. So I'd had 20 years of a team of people supporting me, basically doing all the work while I just sort of flitted around, I suppose. And we were part of Tillington Group. So we had this massive resource. And then suddenly, I've gone on this new crazy world. And I arrive at Glee on the first morning on my own to buy everything for my new garden centre. And I have no support network whatsoever. So I'm back out flying solo. My experience at Glee that year was horrific. And it could have been so much easier if actually some brain engagement had happened before I'd arrived. By me and by the exhibitors. Because some of the things that I encountered as a one-man band trying to buy everything I needed in three days made me tear my hair out. Now, fortunately, five years later, it's grown back in. But um, let me ask you, first of all, how do you want to be remembered at Glee? How do you want to be perceived by us, the buyers, who need to remember you, your company, your product, where to find you, who to ring, who to talk to? How do you want to be remembered? You have an option. Many of Glee exhibitors over the years have chosen to take up this option. And we'll just, um, we'll just consider whether this is the option you want to uh, be. Do you want to be Stinky Pete and friends? And for those of you who are not sure who Stinky Pete is, it's not a bag of something from Ireland. Um, we'll move on. And uh, Do you want to be remembered like this? Stinky Pete, there are, I've lost count of how many Stinky Petes there are at the NEC on day one of the show. You walk on the stands and I kid you not, people stink. And it's because you've arrived in Birmingham, you've built your stand, and then your sales force go, I've heard about the Bolty Alley. Let's go to Ladypool Road and have a curry. And so they all hit the curry, and then on the first day of the show, they're like oozing vapour. And I'm walking on the stand, key, and going, Ooh, I'll come back tomorrow then. Jesus. Or even worse, I had somebody say to me, oh, great. We I won't do the accent. It'll give it away. Anyway, um, <laughs> he said, oh, he said, I haven't been up here before. We went down to Soli Hall last night. I had a fantastic Italian. The wife didn't let me eat garlic because it makes me smell. But I've had a great night out. And I'm like, yeah, God, you've had a great night out. Pack it in. People actually arrive at Glee and you smell. And I'm looking at the roof now, because there's none of you, of course, in the room. But <laughs> bloody hell, your reps stink. And it's because they've been out and had a good time. So please, please, have rule number one. Do not allow them to go out and have a big curry or an Italian the night before the show. Save that for the last night of the show, when you're all going back to the office the day after and you're celebrating your successes. Um, other things that really could, uh, could be done differently. How many people come to the show, and then at the end of the show go, Oh, I didn't see anybody all day. It was a waste of money. Well, you're not going to see a bloody thing if you're sat on your stand with a newspaper in front of your face all morning. And the amount of people, exhibitors, that sit on their stands with the newspaper going, no, I'll be quiet for a while. Nobody comes around this end of the hall till later. No, nobody gone past here for the last 20 minutes. Honest to goodness, it drives me bonkers. No furniture. Why do you need furniture on your stands? Surely you're there to work. Kick the furniture off, kick the newspapers off. If they want a break, send them off to somewhere like a coffee shop. Or have at the, at the most, have a little place they can perch like this. We don't have seats behind our tills in the garden centre. We don't have till operators doing this. 
We make sure they're stood up and talking to our customers. The amount of furniture that Melville sells you lot to put on your stands is criminal. Maybe from Melville here. Okay, we're fine. Do not fill the form in saying, oh yes, comfy chairs. We don't need the chairs as visitors. You don't need the chairs. Get rid of the chairs and the newspapers. Um, what else can we talk about? You don't have to be the biggest stand. Glee is, I think the stands are too big. So the big people in the room, I'm scanning around thinking, are we going to tell me off now? No, I think we're safe on that. I was looking for somebody in particular. You don't have to have the biggest stand in the show. The budget doesn't stretch to it, does it? Glee would be better without some of the massive stands. And I think last year, some of the big stands shrank, didn't they? They got rid of some of the furniture. They got rid of all the stuff we don't want to see. Fantastic. You don't need the biggest. What you do need to be is you've got to be different. You've got to stand out. When I'm walking past your stand, if you've got a Me Too product, if your pricing is indifferent, if your sales force are pretty lazy, at least put some sweeties on the front of the stand. I might just stop then. You know, do something as simple as buy some jelly babies and put them on the front of your stand. Go one step further, think about it a little bit, and buy jelly belly beans. Now this is what you get on a Thursday night in Birmingham if you go to the right kind of places. You can choose your flavours. Um, but um, you can also buy these by colour or by flavour. How about being the standard glee that we remember? Oh, you were the guys with the really funny tasting jelly belly beans. Did you know that you can get all sorts of flavours? You can get toothpaste or pencil shavings. How about that as a conversation stopper? Would you like a little chew on my rotten egg? <laughs> it's going to get people's attention. It doesn't cost you anything to get something different. You're investing time and money and product development and everything else. Do something that just gets you talked about. And I'm, I'm making light of the fact you've got fantastic products and a great deal. Of course you have. You wouldn't be at Glee if you hadn't got that. But what you need is to actually engage us get us chewing on a toffee for a minute and we'll stand there and listen. We can't talk with a toffee in our mouth. So get us to stop and talk to you. And if you don't like mouldy cheese, jelly belly be beans, there's loads of other flavours. How about getting your jelly belly beans colour themed to your logo or your product or your theme of your stand? It doesn't cost any more. Just a few quid. 50 quid, you got it sorted. You should have that as an added extra on the, the Glee exhibitor form. What colour jelly belly beans would you like? So I make light of those sort of things, but do something different, please, and don't spend a fortune on it. My top 10 tips. These are my top 10 serious tips about what you need to do if you're going to get us to buy. And this is talking about us as a group, um, I think quite quick, fast-growing garden centre group. 10 very different sites. We do do some central buying. We also do lots of uh, allow the stores to do their own buying, but we negotiate to the central level. So Glee is where so much of this goes on. Let me tell you about, a little bit about year one. So I arrived at Glee, year one. I'm always keen. You'll find me from 7 a.m. in the Weatherspoons at the top of the ramp by hall, whatever the hall number is now. No, move now to the other Weatherspoons. The Weatherspoons outside the halls. From 7 a.m. we meet every morning. Now our team meets there. I've always met early on. Um, so be in there, get ahead of the traffic, get into the show. Get our minds around what we're looking for today. So that's me on my own five years ago, I walked into the show, and it was still in the old location at that stage, and there was literally the biggest physical exhibitor at that show that year. They had the biggest footprint of the whole show, and if you go back to a show guide five years ago, you'll work out who they were. They actually spanned an aisle, and they had two stands, and I'm talking to them. Now, I've got to make every decision on my buying process in three days and I'm going to compare all the products in the show, look at the quality, the price, the availability, the marketing, the whole lot. And I've got to do all that because I've got time. I've got a new garden centre. It's literally two days old. I haven't got time to leave Glee and think about this later. They had the biggest stand. It will have cost them a mountain of money. They had 50 plus people on the stand. They had all their products there. They were all working and operating. The water features were flowing, the slabs were stacked, and I'm giving it all away. They had not got a bloody price list for the year. They hadn't got a single price list on the stand. So I'm saying, well, how much is it going to be next year? Oh, we haven't got the prices. Uh, it's coming from the printers in two weeks' time. Rubbish. They're waiting to see what their competitors' pricing was like before they published their bleeding price list, weren't they? 
Absolute nonsense. For me, I'm going berserk. I meet a guy I actually know on the stand who says, what's the problem? I said, I've got three flipping days, mate, and you haven't even got your price list in place. And he said, truth is, we're not putting the prices up. It's the same price as last year. Here's last year's price list. How nonsense is all that? You know, and it's only because I knew a guy on the stand who helped me to understand that. Five years later, we are still dealing with that company. But it was like knife edge whether we would deal with them or not. So first point is have your catalogues and price lists at the show. For goodness sakes, we all know you know your prices. And don't give us any, oh, well, the euro's going up and down a little bit at the moment. Not sure what's going to happen. So we haven't published the price list or the dollars going through the floor when the football team have all resigned. We don't want to hear all that. We need to know that you'll have a price list. And if you need to bring in a, but what happens if, fine. Tell us that, but have a price list. Because when I leave your stand and go to another stand three aisles away, I need to be actually comparing product and product, price and price, quality and quality. If you say to me, I'll put it in the post, it'll be with you in a week's time. First of all, I don't believe you, because most of you forget to put it in the post. Secondly, when it comes, it's too late, I've done my buying. And thirdly, I can't even remember who you are, because there was nothing actually outstanding. So catalogues and price lists. I'm going to ask you the question. I've got 10 garden centres. I'm very proud of that. What's the deal for my 10 garden centres? And if you say to me, oh, I don't know, we haven't thought about that then I'm going to be, well, I need to know that, because otherwise I can't compare you. If the answer is, there ain't nothing better than what you see here, that's the best price for the whole country, well, that's the answer. But have an answer, please have an answer, because it's a critical question. We'll also say to you, what about if we centrally dis distribute? Is there a benefit to us for doing that? If you seriously want to supply groups of garden centres and groups of retailers, please, please, please prepare the answers to the questions before the show. There's nothing more frustrating than saying, oh, I'll have to ask the boss and he doesn't work day one of Glee because he's playing golf in Spain. He'll be here tomorrow though. I won't be back there tomorrow at that area of the show. I'll have moved on. Uh, point three, finished items. The amount of times that we get shown a spade and you go, oh, the handle comes off. Oh, that's, that's good. Is that detachable? Not meant to be. But the real ones will be much better when they arrive. Well, are we going to place an order for a mock-up against the real product? Of course we're not. You know, if you're putting all that money and effort in going to Glee, please bring real products. Fly them in from wherever they've been made. Just get something made that actually tells us this is the real McCoy. The amount of exhibitors that have mock-ups that's not quite finished. Well, we come to be serious buyers. We need to see serious product. Um, friendly, well-informed people. There's two big points in there. The amount of companies that employ lovely ladies to stand on their stand and help Oh, I can't help you with anything, but I can make your coffee while you're waiting. Well, you could train those people to help you a little bit more. Or the complete opposite end of the scale, I've had people say to me, I'm his mother. He's just slipped to the toilet, but if you want to wait a minute, I'll be able to help you when he comes back. Well, I re realise resource is an issue, but if mother is going to help you on the stand, please give us some more information. Maybe tell her not to mention your irritable bowel syndrome while she's at it, because frankly, it's not quite the impression you want to leave. These are all true stories from Glee. These have all happened to me in the 30 years I've been going to Glee. Every one of them. So friendly but well informed. Inspirational displays. Don't just put a load of stuff on the floor or posters on the wall. Please try to inspire us to think, hey, that would look really good in our garden centre. The amount of people that just sort of prop things up and it doesn't take a lot. A little bit of creative display work. If you go out to Frankfurt, dare I mention a show in Frankfurt, The Christmas World, they do phenomenal displays. You just feel like you're walking around the best garden centre in Britain. That is in Britain, isn't it? The best one in the world. So that's fine. Um, you see sensational displays that make us want to sell your product. So please think about how we will retail the product, not how you've got it stored in your warehouse. Highlight the new. Jelly Babies may also help to stop me as I walk past. But highlighting new product, simply having a little flash on a product, highlighting something new. It could be new to you, could be a new innovation, could be a new colour. But there's a lot of miles to walk at Glee. And if we get something to catch our eye, just simply a silent message, new for 2017, then that will actually help draw people onto your stand. The amount of people who say, would you like me to show you around the new products? Oh, yeah, OK. And then they go around looking for their own new products on their stand. Drives you bonkers, honestly. Put it on the stand, make it obvious. We're a garden centre. We rely on volume of 
customers. We need volume to sustain our business. We are selling items that sell in the thousands. If you've got a great product that will sell in the tens, it might be okay for us. If you've got a great product we might sell a few a year, it might be okay for us. But it's more likely that we're interested in a volume product which we can sell a lot of. And if you say, well, we hand finish these, we can do 12 a month, then to be honest, that's not going to be of interest to us unless it's a thousand pound sculpture and we think that's great. But if it's something you want us to seriously consider putting onto our shop floor to take the space of something else, we've got to have a confidence that it's got a chance of selling in volume. And that means you've got to back up the stock. You've got to be confident that you can supply the garden centre industry with enough stock. Alternatively, it's got to have a thumping great margin. It's got to have a brilliant margin for us to get excited. Uh, we sell sculptures in the garden centres. We've sold 14 metal horses this year, which are 10 and a half foot tall, and we retail those at £999. So we've only sold 14, not a big volume, but the margin is terrific. And it's a lovely unit sale, and it stands outside, it takes up no indoor retail space, and we sell them almost as fast as we put them out there. It's a great product that's generating a great margin. So we're interested in that, but that's pretty unique, that sort of product. Of course, the ideal scenario, give me something that does both. A volume and a margin. You're competing against, I don't think there's any sock people here. Socks. Anybody sell socks? If we ignore our coffee shop, if we ignore the tea and the coffee and the cake we sell, our biggest selling volume, highest margin product in our group of garden centres are socks. They take up about 18 inches of wall space. We buy them every week. You can notice this mic is a good one, mate. Socks. <laughs> I had a conversation with a very large manufacturer a few years ago who said in his Irish accent, Boyd, how can I not get my products on the front of your tills? And Edward didn't talk like that, I know, but there we are. And I said, Edward, the truth is, mate, that those socks on the front of the tills are generating 68% margin, and there's my volume report. Jesus, you don't want to take them socks off the front of them tills, do you? Bloody hell, we can't compete with that. That is what you're competing with. Sometimes there are products you just cannot knock out. But maybe you can. Maybe you've got something that will take socks down Sounds slightly pervy, doesn't it? Take your socks down. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's a party. Um, but that is the sort of thing that is going into garden centres. And sometimes there is no logic that you can present that will beat that product. But if you can get somewhere close, then, of course, we want more than just socks. We're not just sock shop. But that small amount of space generates huge volume. And if you think you're going to get your product on our till fronts to sell a few a week at 32% margin, it ain't going to happen. Um, and of course, finally, sweeties. Number one tip, get some sweeties on your stand. Not for me, I'm diabetic, I can't eat them. And don't get the sugar-free ones, they're disgusting. Um, but just do something different. Get people on your stand for a reason that is just completely unique. We're going to go through the show this year and there's going to be like 74 stands with jelly belly beans, aren't there? So it's going to be great. Um, that's my message. Underneath all of that, really, is hopefully some seriousness that we're at Glee to be serious buyers. We come along, it is a critical time for us, it's a really huge show. So much of our year is shaped by what we see and learn at Glee. And to be honest, if you try to get hold of me or the buyers after Glee, you could wait weeks and months, because we've got other things to get on with. We've got Christmas shows, food shows, um, all the other things going on. We need Glee to be as efficient as possible for us to make our decisions. When we come out of Glee, we, we meet every morning at 7 o'clock to discuss the previous day. We meet the day after Glee to make decisions. And waiting for catalogues to come two or three weeks later takes you out of the decision process. It really just knocks you back. I'd like to get you doing something now. And my able assistant here is going to pass around a piece of paper. This is the new, just revealed today, hot off the X Factor recording sheets, Glee anthem. Not even Glee know they've now got an anthem. But this is our secret anthem. And I want you to take part and share in this new discovery. If we move to the next slide. Yes, sorry. I need you all standing up. Please, everybody stand up. You can't sway and swoosh unless you're standing. You've got to be standing up. This is the new, this is your anthem. This is for you at Glee 2016. 
your friend in me. All together now. You got a friend in me. The old looks rough ahead. As a mouse from your nice warm bed. Island Essex, wherever you come from. You remember what your old pal said. You got a friend in me. I'm your friend. I want to work with you. You've got a friend in me. I feel you're not singing along. Come on, hit it big time. A friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. I got my son. It's the same thing I'll do for you. Together, we'll see it through. You've got a friend in me. And sway. You've got a friend in me. Some might be a little bit smarter than I am, and you. Bigger and stronger too, we don't worry about them. I love you the way I do. Ooh. Just me and you, boy. That's me, you're thinking about me. Destiny, no friend in me. Big finale, here we go. You got a friend in me. And one more. You've got a friend in me. Round of applause for yourselves. All I can say is have a great glee. I look forward to making friends with you all.